Welcome back, bookworms. This is Mrs. K. I'm glad you could join me. Have you ever wondered how a potato chip became invented? Well, in today's story, we find out who and why it happened. Let's experience the magic of reading as I read to you Mr. Crumb's Potato Predicament, written by Anne Renaud and illustrated by Felicita Sala. George Crumb loved to cook. He fricasseed and flambéed, boiled and braised, poached and pureed. He made sorbets and souffles, stews and succotashes, ragouts and goulashes. George loved cooking so much, his house ballooned with food. So he opened a restaurant called Crumb's Place and hired a waitress with cheeks round as plums named Gladys. George cooked to his heart's content, and his customers devoured his concoctions. Many considered him to be the best cook in the county. That is, until one day, when in walked a peculiar-looking patron. He wore a purple polka-dotted cravat and a sunflower on his lapel. Filbert P. Horsefeathers is the name. He trumpeted. The P stands for punctilious, and I have a hankering for a heaping helping of potatoes. Just potatoes, said Gladys. Just potatoes, said Filbert. So with a swish of his apron and a tap to his chef's hat, George got to work. He cut the potatoes into wedges, boiled them, fried them in a dollop of lard, and sprinkled them with salt. Then Gladys set the potatoes down in front of Filbert Punctilious Horse Feathers. Filbert speared a wedge with his fork and peered at it from all sides. Too thick, he said, pursing his lips and pushing his plate away. Well, huckleberry biscuits, said Gladys. The customer at table five is setting his plate back. Picky, 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 muttered George, who had never before had a customer refuse his cooking. So, with another swish of his apron and a tap to his chef's hat, George prepared a plateful of thinner wedges, and Gladys set them down in front of Filbert Punctilious Horse Feathers. Filbert speared a wedge with his fork, peered at it, and took a teeny tiny nibble. Still too thick and bland as burlap, he said, rolling his eyes and pushing his plate away. Well, fly and flapjacks, said Gladys. The customer at table five is sending his plate back again. Fussy, 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 muttered George, who proceeded to cook a plateful of even thinner wedges, this time with an extra splash of salt. When Gladys set the potatoes down in front of Filbert Punctilious Horse Feathers, Filbert speared a wedge with his fork, peered at it, nibbled it, and then took a bean-sized bite. Still too thick, still bland, and undercooked, he said puffing out his cheeks and pushing his plate away. Gladys let out a tut-tut and a and a snort and then picked up the plate and returned to George's kitchen a third time. Oh my. This cannot be, said George. Everyone loves my spuds. They are scrumptious. They are succulent. They are sublime. Not according to finicky, persnickety, filbert, punctilious horse fellers, said Gladys. Oh, my. 
Now, George was known to his customers to be a bit of a prankster, and his daily menu was evidence of his lively sense of humor. To draw a laugh or two, George often listed menu items that were, shall we say, somewhat unusual. Today's specials, stewed skunk in sassafras sauce, pickled possum pancakes, grilled groundhog and croute. <laughs> So, in the spirit of playfulness, George took one more potato and carefully balancing it on his chopping block. With his finest, sharpest knife, he slowly shaved it into the thinnest, slimmest, and trimmest of slices. He heated a ladle full of lard in his pan and fried the slices until they were so crispy, they crackled, and then he showered them with salt. Let's see how Mr. Horsefeathers fancies these spuds said George with a wink. With a wisp of a smile, Gladys set the plate down in front of Filbert Punctilius Horsefeathers. Filbert turned the plate this way, then that way. He tried spearing one with the potato slices, but it splintered. So Filbert put down his fork, and with his fingers, he stacked the slices until they teetered. Then he cracked one, and he snapped one. Only after that did Filbert Punctilius Horsefeathers pop one into his mouth. Perfection, he proclaimed. And before you could say prickly porcupine pie, Filbert had munched, crunched, and gobbled up every last morsel. I guess the joke is on you, said Gladys when she returned the empty plate to George. Fire up that frying pan one more time. I want to try these for myself. So with a swish of his apron and a tap to his chef's hat, George did exactly that. Why, my taste buds are tap dancing, exclaimed Gladys after sampling George's new creation. Delectable and delicious, declared George after he too ate a few. I'll call them Crumbs Crisp Crispies and put a plateful on every table. Word spread, and before long, people from all over the county and far, far beyond were clamoring for George's new concoction, which came to be known as potato chips. Well, bookworms, I hope you enjoyed this story. It was really interesting to find out that the potato chip was made as a prank and turned out to be a favorite snack we all crave today. Now, if you enjoy this story, be sure to check it out at your local library or go to a bookstore and buy a copy for yourself. If you enjoy reading with me, become an official bookworm and subscribe. Until next time, enjoy the magic of reading. Bye.